formed. And here's the Saline River. Notice the makeup of the county and how it looked back then. Chester Ashley was a large landowner in Saline County, Arkansas. He served as United States Senator from Arkansas. And if you notice in Benton, we have an Ashley Street named in his honor. William was the founder of the Arkansas Gazette, owned many acres of land in early Saline County. He was also mentioned as owner of the salt works in Saline County. He was owner of the area that was auctioned off for the new city of Benton. James Severe Conway, first governor of Arkansas, owned land in early Saline County. And notice that we have a Severe Street and a Conway Street. On March 15, 1836, the Arkansas Gazette stated that the county commissioners had selected a very eligible spot on the military road leading from Little Rock to Washington, about two miles north of Saline Crossing. The town was to be called Benton in compliment to Senator Thomas Hart Benton of Missouri. Benton became the county seat. Here's Senator Thomas Hart Benton of Missouri. He worked to get Arkansas into the Union. Yes, let me try to get it down just a little bit. Okay, Sen Senator Thomas Hart Benton, uh, with his help, Arkansas was admitted to the Union as a slave state on June the 15th, 1836. And notice that Benton, uh, that Saline County had been created eight months earlier than when Arkansas came into the Union. The first courthouse and first jail were built in 1838. A census showed the population of the county was 1,943, of whom 416 were slaves and two were free colored persons. This is the third jail. Over here on this side is the jail. And this is the second Saline County Courthouse. Notice its shape. Now remember this location. Remember what the county courthouse looks like and the jail, and I'm going to show you a picture a little bit later that you might be able to pick it out. All right, here's an 1847 map of Saline counties showing Caldwellton, Collegeville, Benton, and notice that Hurricane Creek was also called Runforce Creek in 1847. Saline County continued to grow in 1840. The population of the county was 2061 and 1850 the population of the county was 3,903. By 1860 the population was 6,640 and of that number 749 were slaves. Here's the J.W. Shopak House built with slave labor finished in 1852. Reverend Andrew Hunter came to Sling County in the 1830s. He was known as the father of Arkansas Methodism. Andrew Hunter's home at Bride on the Old Southwest Trail, this home is on Highway 5, was reportedly built around two log cabins. Andrew Hunter purchased it in 1872. And today, it looks like this. It's a dentist office. Maybe you see it there on, off of Highway 5. This is on the National Register of Historic Places. Honorable A.H. Rutherford from Saline County served as state treasurer from 1855 to 57. He lived in Collegeville. Here's an 1855 map of Saline County, and you can notice that it goes all the way down into what's now uh, Grant County. Here's Cherry Grove, Lost Creek, you see Benton, Owensville was created, Collegeville, and this is Aiken Store. Here's some of the settlements. Another picture of uh, Saline County in 1855. Saline County was alive with activity as news came down the military road from Little Rock of activities in Charleston Harbor in April of 1861. Men were eager to join in the fight and units were organized. About 15 full companies were organized from Saline County for the war between the states. A large number of Saline County men were killed or wounded in the war. Henry M. Rector, Civil War Governor of Arkansas, lived near the Saline-Pulaski County line in Saline County. Colonel James F. Fagan, who lived on River Street, later was Confederate States of America General from Benton in Saline County and organized a unit and left for Virginia to be part of the 1st Arkansas. Colonel Jebaz Smith, he was elected Colonel of the 11th Arkansas Regiment, which consisted of companies from Saline, Hot Spring, Columbia, Hempstead, and Washita counties. The majority of men were from Saline County. The regiment was organized in Benton on the courthouse lawn. 
Colonel William A. Crawford organized a cavalry regiment and saw action at Mark's Mill, Jenkins Ferry, and Poison Springs, among others. He later served as a general during the Brooks-Baxter War. He wasn't a general during the Confederacy, but he was later during the Brooks-Baxter War in the 1870s. J.W. Shoppock House built in 1852. In April 1861, a ceremony presenting a battle flag to Saline County Company E, 1st Arkansas Infantry, was held on the steps of this house. In 1863, when General Steele occupied Benton, Union officers took quarters in this house. Here's Major General Frederick Steele. He captures Benton in 1863. Fort Bussey was built in October 1863 when Union troops occupied the town of Benton, Arkansas. Until December 1863, it was located where the city water tanks are on Carpenter Street about there where uh, Walgreens is today. As the Federals moved out, the Confederates moved back in. Cyrus Bussey served as Colonel of the 3rd Iowa Cavalry. He commanded a small force in addition to his own regiment at Elkhorn Tavern. He was in command of a brigade of cavalry during Frederick Steele's successful expedition against Arkansas Post. Bussey also commanded a division of cavalry in the Vicksburg Campaign. He was appointed Brigadier General Volunteers in January of 1864. The Lenz House, located on Military Road, built around 1836. Confederates and Union soldiers traveled by this house on the old Military Road. The house is still standing, barely, on Highway 5. The Lenz is later added to the house to make it look more like houses in Europe. The lenses were from Switzerland, and they changed the effect of the putting the gables and things like that up dormers to make it look more like a uh, house they would find in Europe. It's supposedly built around a log, log cabin. The Ten Mile House or Stagecoach Road, Stagecoach House on the Southwest Trail located near the Saline and Pulaski County line. David O'Dodd had relatives lived in Benton and he also was here for a while. He was hung on January 8, 1864 in Little Rock after having been convicted of spying for the Confederacy. The Battle of Jenkins Ferry was fought on April 30, 1864 in the Saline River Bottoms. At the time, the battle site was in Saline County. It's now in Grant County. This is a view of the battlefield area as it appears today. The Battle of Jenkins Ferry was fought in the White Oak Swamp on the south side of the Saline River. The river was high and the swamps were flooded at the time of the battle, creating miserable conditions for the soldiers of both armies. The Confederates launched three fierce but poorly coordinated attacks against Federal troops, positioned behind hasty breastworks in the swamp. The battlefield site today is on private property and access is restricted. The Confederates claimed losses of 86 killed, 356 wounded. One missing. The Federals claimed 63 killed, 413 wounded, and 45 missing, but most historians think the numbers were greater because some units did not file official returns. Some of the generals from the South that were involved in this were Sterling Price, Thomas Churchill, and Edmund Kirby Smith. The Battle of Hurricane Creek took place near Bryant. After the fall of Little Rock to Union forces in September 1863, the area immediately south of the Arkansas River became a no-man's land. On the morning of October 25, 1864, a federal detachment of the 7th Army Corps returned to Little Rock after raiding the Confederate arsenal at Princeton, Arkansas. It was engaged by Logan's 11th Arkansas Confederate Cavalry at a point one mile southeast of this spot. The ensuing battle was fought at the Hurricane Creek Crossing on the Old Camden Road and resulted in 28 men killed, 11 wounded, and one man captured. If you were here the night that Anthony Rushing talked about this battle at Hurricane Creek, you know he disputed those numbers a little bit there. Saline County was devastated by the Civil War, with Union armies marching through the county and stealing anything that was not nailed down. People had a hard time finding food for their families. This is my great-great-grandmother, Sarah Lucretia Capel Ho. Uh, she had several run-ins with bushwhackers during the war. She was told to get off a hope chest that she was sitting on, and she told them they would have to kill her first. They left her alone. She lost her husband, James W. Hogue, in October of 1862 to the Civil War. She's buried in Bryant Cemetery. <coughs> Beginning in 1866, pottery is manufactured in the Benton area. Stoneware was made from the large deposits of kale and clay in the area. 
Around 1868, Mr. Lafayette Glass discovered a deep gully in the roadside near the military road, right here where this library sits. He decided it would become a good source for pottery clay. He purchased the land and soon began to make jugs out of the clay. This is pottery made by the Benton Brick and Tile Company in 1909. In 1867, the Salem Methodist Church campground was established in the Salem community northeast of Benton. By 1870, the population of Saline County, Arkansas had decreased from 6,640 in 1860 to just 3,911. So see how the Civil War affected the population. In 1873, the first railroad comes through Saline County. It was St. Louis and Iron Mountain and Southern Railway. The Cairo Fulton Railroad Company built a bridge across the Saline River. 1873 map of Saline County showing Saline County. In 1870, as railroads began to enter Saline County, and the Iron Horse Age was born. The St. Louis, Iron Mountain, and Southern Railroad was one of the first to come into the county. Depots began to be built. This is the St. Louis and Iron Mountain and Southern Railroad Depot built here in Benton. In 1875, Perkins Township, Pulaski County, which included the town of Woodson, was added to Saline County. It gave the appearance that the map of Saline County had a tail. <laughs> This is called, this is Perkins Township, and there's Woodson. This is the road from Little Rock to Pine Bluff. Now that is going, there's Craig's Mill, which is, later was East End. Here's Hurricane, which is Sardis. And you see these other communities. Taylor Collett opens the first business in Traskwood. The town of Traskwood was named for a Mr. Trask and a Mr. Wood. The railroad came through in the 1873. Traskwood Post Office established in 1874. Garland County is established the same year. In 1876, the Saline County Digest is the first newspaper published in Saline County, Arkansas. Mr. W.A. Weber was the publisher. Shaw Township is created from part of Saline. On January 24, 1877, 20 miles northwest of Benton, Miss Harriet Stainer and Miss Purcell Taylor were murdered by an unnatural nephew. Thomas P. Stainer murdered them by using a heavy iron poker. The motive was money. Thomas Stainer was reportedly the first and last man to be hung on the courthouse lawn. In 1877, there were five potteries in Benton. A.L. Herrick, Lafayette Glass, Arch Tyler, James Howe, and Mr. John Hyten. Benton businesses listed in 1877 were Fred Bush, L.B. Hall, D.S. McCray, John L. Hughes, and H.T. Caldwell. Professor R.H. Perham was to take charge of the school in Benton. Holland Township was created from part of Union Township. In 1880, Saline County had a population of 8,953. Benton had a population of 452. In 1882, B.B. Beavers purchases the Saline County Digest and renames the paper the Saline County Review. Mr. John W. Ashby begins a general merchandise store and undertaking business. In 1883, Colonel S.H. Whithorn buys Beaver's interest in the newspaper and renames it the Saline Courier, which it's called today. In 1883, map of Saline County. I've never heard of this, but there's Bob right there. In 1887, John C. Branner, state geologist, is the first to identify bauxite in Arkansas. 1888, map of Saline County. In 1889, an iron bridge is built across the Saline River. The bridge was at the end of River Street where the old military road crossed the Saline River. J.K. Bell Building was built in Benton in 1888. That's where some people in this room go have breakfast every morning. <laughs> 